Okay, raise your hand and repeat after me. I solemnly promise to stop doing this one thing that is holding me back from painting my most beautiful, accomplished portraits. I promise. I promise to stop doing this. Okay, what is this? I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay, the thing is painting from bad photos. If you're going to paint portraits from photos, please, I'm begging you, use a good photo. So that brings me to the point, what is a good photo? Well, I'm about to show you. Hey guys, hang tight till the end. I've got a special offer coming your way. Here's a good photo that you can paint a portrait from. It has a single light source, which makes it very easy to understand where the shadows are on the face. And you need to be able to see shadows on the face in order to have something to describe the volume and the shape of the person's face. If you don't have a situation like this where there's a single light source and you have some good shadow definition, then your portrait is going to be poorly lit and it's going to result in a bad portrait painting that looks flat like a cartoon. Now we understand what a good photo is. Let me show you some of the photos that I have seen actual students try to paint from. And they wonder why they are struggling and pulling their hair out and screaming and crying about, you know, it's so hard. It's so hard to paint portraits. Well, yeah, it's hard when you're painting from this horrible photo that you can't see anything in. You can't see any detail. The photo's this big or it was taken a million years ago with like the oldest Polaroid known to man and it's crumbled and fading. But here, I'm going to show you some of the worst photos actual bad photos that I've seen students try to work from. This is a bad photo because look at the shadows, how most of the area of the mouth and in the nose and the eyes are set into the shadow. You can't see really any good detail in the features. This is a classic no-no, bad photo. Don't try to paint portraits from a photo like this. If there's something about this photo that you really love and must try to capture in a painting, then perhaps you could recreate the photo or find you know, a, a setting where you could get these women together and take the picture again with better lighting. I mean, there's gotta be ways to work around this. Even the most accomplished portrait painter would have difficulty <laughs> pulling a really good uh, portrait painting out of this photo. And here's another one, too much shadow. The eyes are squinty. You can't see the detail of the features. It's just not going to produce a good portrait painting. Don't use this photo. <laughs> here's another bad portrait photo. This has too much light and way too much smile. You don't want to have your subjects with huge grinning, laughing type smiles with lots of teeth. It's just never a good idea and it rarely results in a good portrait painting. And look at the lighting. There's no really um, true shadow shapes. It's just so much light and it's kind of flat light on the front of the face and a lot of bright light on the side of the head. It's just not going to be you know, a good reference for your painting. Another bad photo, too much teeth. <laughs> While this is the cutest couple photograph, it is not going to result in a good portrait painting. Do not use a photograph like this one to work from in your portrait painting. Do not. Okay, there's so much wrong going on with this photo. There's too much smile, the bad lighting because the bright light from the sun, and it's a little blurry. The features are out of focus. Uh, it's just not a good photo to paint from. Here we have a good photo. Look at the shadow definition along the left side of his nose and the left side of his face. Even though he's wearing a hat, he's under some type of awning. So he's outside in fairly pretty bright light, but because the light's coming from one side and nothing too crazy overhead, it's actually a good photo. I would enjoy painting this gentleman's portrait. 
And if you're a beginner, your life would be so much easier because you can see the features. You can see the shadows. He's got great volume and definition in the face. You wouldn't be struggling to capture a likeness with this type of photographic reference. As a beginning portrait painter, what you mostly struggle with is getting the likeness of your sitter. So in order to do that, you have to have some shadows. If you capture the shape of the shadow in your sitter's face, you are halfway there. You're going to get a likeness. If you don't have these shadow shapes to work with in your photo reference, then you're definitely going to struggle, especially as a beginner portrait painter. So look for photo references that have good shadow definition and it will make your job of painting this, this person's portrait and getting their likeness so much easier. You're going to enjoy, you're going to have fun, you're going to be happy while you're painting and you should be. That's what painting portraits is about. It's a joyful thing. It shouldn't be a horrible struggle and a fight with your canvas. It should just kind of feel like it's part of you and it's natural and it will if you're going to work from photos they must be good photos and even if you're painting from life which is awesome to do as well you still want to have good lighting you want to get your light on your subject set up so that you have the shadow definition and again without the shadow definition you're going to struggle to capture a likeness especially as a beginner who wants to play a game all right it's going to be called good photo or bad photo. And you're gonna scream out at the computer or the TV, whatever you're watching YouTube on, and tell me, good or bad? All right, let's do it. Okay, what do you think? Good, bad? If you guessed good, you're right. All right, what about this one? Good, bad, hmm, yeah, bad. <laughs> All right, what about this one? I can kind of see her pretty clearly, bad. <laughs> This one, cute kid, good shadows. Hmm, yeah, I think it's good. How about this one? Uh, bad. There's light coming from everywhere. Bad. Oh my gosh, so much. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> All right, what do you think about this one? There's good shadows. There's good lighting. It's a good one. How about this? I can't see this guy. I can't see his face. Can't see his eyes. There's a hat. Ugh, bad. This is what I'm talking about. Teeny tiny one inch photos. Bad. <laughs> All right. Beautiful lighting. Good shadow definition. I can see one side of her face really good. Good photo. Polaroids. Oh, what do we all like about Polaroids? Nothing when it comes to portrait painting. Bad photo. This is a good photo. Good, good, good. Look at the lighting in her. All right. This one, seriously, do we need to even go further? <laughs> bad. All right. Here's another one. What do you think? Hmm. I think it's good. I would paint this. What about this? I like the shadow definition. I like the lights from behind her. Good. Polaroid. Oh, my favorite. Look at the horrible lighting, and the flatness. Bad. Oh, blurry. Who wants to paint blurry? Bad. <laughs> okay. Loving this one. Look at the lighting. She just glows. Even this costume is awesome. Good photo. Okay. The makeup. Don't paint portraits with overdone makeup. Bad. <laughs> I can't see them. It's a cute picture, but no, bad for a portrait. All right. There's a theme here. Are ever pictures from cars good to paint from? No, it's bad. <gasps> Another one. Car photos, lights coming in from every which direction, bad. Studio lighting, good. <laughs> I love this one. Okay, you guys might recognize this picture. Is me, three years old, bad, bad for portrait painting. Okay, what did we learn from the good, bad game? <laughs> there seemed to be a theme about photos that were taken while inside of a car. It's just lights coming in from every which direction. It's not a one directional light. Rarely have I seen a picture come in that was taken in a car that I would want to paint a portrait from. Okay, the next thing is too much makeup. 
you don't want to take these like glamour shots that are you know you'd see in like a vogue magazine or something and try to paint a portrait of someone with all this crazy thick amounts of makeup on unless that's just absolutely who they are but then try to light it well at least and do the best that you can but usually painting a portrait with a photograph that has a person wearing a lot of makeup does not result in a good painting. Point and shoot cameras such as the Polaroid, um, usually you know the, the pictures taken from directly in front of the subjects, the light is just smacking you right in the center of the face. There's no good shadow definition. Rarely have I ever seen a point and shoot camera do a good job of taking a reference photo for a portrait painting passport photos or teeny tiny like one inch photos not going to be successful in your portrait painting uh, endeavor using a, por a photo that you can barely see even if you have to put it under a microscope it's just going to make the painting process miserable just don't do it old family photos so you know you you want to capture sometimes family members and all you have to work from is an older photo you know, save it for when you're perhaps a little more accomplished and you can, you know, you can create lighting and make portraits, especially if it's a photo that you can at least see the features in. It's just that the lighting's not there. You can create the lighting once you get more skilled at understanding how light hits the face and what makes, you know, what type of lighting makes a good portrait painting. Casual pictures where the subjects are kind of far away, like that one where the couple was on the couch. It was a very cute um, picture for a photograph, maybe for a figurative painting where it's not important to see their face in you know a lot of detail. But as far as a portrait painting goes, it's just not going to give you the results that you want. And blurry photos. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times students have been showing me portraits that they're working on and you know they're wanting to critique and they're showing me their reference and it's so blurry that I can't even really critique it because I can't see the photo. So if you can't even see the photo how in the world are you supposed to paint it? So now you understand what is a good photograph for you to paint from if you need a little more assistance in setting up your photo to work from and get your painting started, I have the video for you. It's how to paint a portrait from a photo. And if you want to learn more about taking your own photographs to use as a painting reference, I have a video for you on that as well. Just click on those here, hopefully they're here at the end, and uh, you can see that next. Okay, special offer time. If you are one of the people that have taken me up on my offer to go through the three ways to start a portrait painting, it's my free offering to you guys. It's in the description. Um, I'd love some feedback on that. If you've actually taken the course on that, please email me, which is in the description as well, your feedback. And if you do that, I will give you a free critique. Yes, you will get a free critique. Just email me the feedback on the free course, three ways to start a portrait painting, and the critique is yours. The critiques are great because I do them with a video setup so that I will email you the video. You'll have it to watch over and over again so you can understand exactly what you could do better, what you've done well. I love to start my critiques out with the good, the positive notes of what's going on in the um, painting that you've sent in for critique. And then I just gently tell you a few things that perhaps you could be doing to make it better. And then you'll have that video to watch over and over again. So guys, if you have seen the three ways to start a portrait painting, please send me some feedback. The email address for that is in the description. And thanks for watching guys. See you next time.